Hi, welcome on the Neuromarketing on Allegro podcast, where we explore ways to make the products you sell online among the most preferred. My name is Karolina Albanowska, and I'm the owner of Albari Marketing, a company specializing in research and training in the field of neuromarketing. And I'm Tomasz Świętoniowski, and I've been running training sessions and consultations for business owners for many years, helping them grow their companies. I own an agency specializing in boosting sales on Allegro. Hi, everybody, our listeners and presenters. Today, we have a special guest for you. Let me introduce him to you. Kevin Hogan, American influence and body language expert, a master in persuasion. He conducts training for salespeople, management and communication managers in many countries around the world, attended by hand and managers of major companies such as ABM, Microsoft, Starbucks and also for the Polish government. He is the author of many books about persuasion and body language. Kevin, we invited you here to tell us how Persuade Technicus can be used on the Marketplace platform. Our podcasts focus on the Allegro platform. It's kind of Polish Amazon. It's like Amazon, but better. It's Polish version, so it's better. <laughs> First. Kevin, do you want to add something about yourself? I give you the stage. Sure. Um, 26 books, 46 languages. Um, probably been to Poland 22 times. Um, we've worked with the government of Poland, worked with the Catholic Church in Poland. But today, today is special because today I met uh, three people who do um, product description work with Amazon, which is not as good as Allegro, I understand. but. Um, if, if they work on similar uh, algorithms, and if they have similar concepts uh, across the board, we should be fine with my understanding of uh, Allegro. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you guys some cool tools to uh, make things work online with Allegro. And if I say Amazon, forgive me, that's my life for a long time. It, it was a little joke that I, I, I told that uh, Allegro is better, but I think that Allegro in Poland is uh, a little more uh, useful or convenient or friendly for customers. For example, uh, I can find uh, everything on, on Allegro, what I w want to find, but on Amazon it's sometimes really difficult because Amazon has such uh, algorithms. Amazon decides what I should buy, not what I want. Absolutely. That is a fact. Before we go into an extensive interview, tell us, Kevin, how was your day today? Ah, a good day today. Like I say, I got to meet with some people who have uh, special knowledge in your area, um, which is uh, online platforms that are huge. And uh, that's not my favorite platform in the world. But here's the deal. I've sold on Amazon since the day it opened. Okay. So, so it's part of my life forever. It's however, that's a lot, like 50 years or something like that. Um, and I've learned a lot about online platforms just through mistakes and through making uh, errors. But then I've, I've had help along the way to, to make it better. First thing we talked about today was um, I asked, I asked these guys, all three of them, I met with three people and I asked them, uh, you know, like, what what should people do? Should they do sponsored advertising? Should they do, uh, you know, should they pay for the keywords? Should they um, pay for the ads? And um, the guy to my right, he just smiles. And he's like, organic traffic, organic traffic. If you don't do organic traffic, they lose. So that was the first piece of advice that I got today from the group. Now, this is not persuasion. That's just good sense, okay? The next thing I asked them about was, the algorithms. Now, obviously, Allegro has different algorithms than Amazon. Amazon directs you to specific products, particularly those that are highly rated. Amazon is very, very fussy. So if, if on Allegro, you're looking for a, a random product or something like to try out that's new, that's not the Amazon model by any means. The Amazon model will take you directly to what they think is the best match for you. Mm -hmm. That has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage you have 
is that a, a person who's new in business, in theory, with an algorithm that doesn't drive you to specific products, should give you an advantage that is close to somebody who's been in the business for a few years. So that's pretty cool. So that's that's a very huge thing from the business side, from from my business side, say. So if I have my books on Allegro, I wonder if my books are on Allegro, by the way. We got to find that out later on, okay? So so because I have no idea. Um, so that's so that's a huge advantage you guys have over Amazon uh, marketing. Um, next thing would be one of the things that Amazon does right is at that I hope Allegro does, and you guys can tell me if this is not correct. But when Amazon to to, to draw the analogy really wants you to use lots of words, lots of pictures, lots of videos. Like not one or few. I'm an Amazon Vine reviewer. That means every day I get eight products sent to my house. Okay. Eight new products every single day, seven days a week. I review eight products every single day, seven days a week. All right. So the house is filled and Christmas filled with, with Amazon products every year. It's a lot. So what as a reviewer, I've been reviewing what, 14 years now. And, uh, and it's fun. It's sort of like one of the, the one of the fun things I enjoy doing, and uh, and it's it's great because I get to get things that I think my friends will like for gifts and all that kind of stuff. So that's cool. So anyhow, um, as a reviewer, they want me to write these big long reviews, right? Huge reviews. Why? Because words sell. Okay, words sell. And one of the big mistakes is is they think, oh, well, if I have a video, everything will be fine. Or if I have pictures, everything will be fine. Or if I just have words, everything will be fine. Not true online. Online, we need tons of words because a lot of people just read words. In fact, when you look at text, and we'll talk about this in copywriting later on if you want, um, but when you're looking at text, the more text that you have about your product, the more valuable your product is perceived to be. So if I could describe what it costs, just so, well, think about it, right? I have a question for you, because in Poland, we met situation that people say they don't read texts. They say that they don't pay attention to texts at all, but only watch videos. But on Allegro, we can't add videos. We can only add pictures, a title, and subtitles. You say words are the most important things. However, are you sure people are reading it? What do you think about it? Well, let me let me just make sure I understand that. So Allegro, you're not allowed to use video. Is that correct? Yes, Allegro just started tested uh, added video, but only on selected uh, sellers. Okay, and what about pictures? Uh, it's uh, up to 16 pictures on every uh, offer. In my opinion, like a customer, I think the pictures are the best, you know, rule in this process. So what do you think about it? First of all, pictures are important, period. If you have 16 possibilities, you use all 16. You'd be crazy if you didn't. But... Um, as far as words, are words more important than pictures? What if I was selling a vitamin? Okay. So a picture of the vitamin from all the different angles is not going to give me much of an impression about what it's going to do for me. We need words, lots of words. When you take it, here's how often you take it. Here's what people report. And then here's all of the people that say that this vitamin is a good vitamin. And then you have what other people should experience when they use this vitamin and how often to take it and how uh, how many you want to take and have all of that stuff. All of that stuff is super important. So words and photos, they go hand in hand. Um, you can't really sell without either nowadays. Um, they're both critical. Hmm. Okay. So can you show us any examples? Maybe do you have any links with offers? What do you think? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So here's a here's a beautiful example of what would be on Allegro. This is a product that arrived on my doorstep two days ago. All right. Now, this is it's a good picture in the left hand side there. And it's a charger. And we all know what a charger is that that charges our phone. It charges. Um, it would run a, a, a light a light. Um, uh, you could plug in anything. You could plug in the guitar actually over here and, and play. So so it's it's got it's cool. And that's why I was like, okay, I'll review this product. So then I went down and I ordered the product. Okay. 
Now, I got the product, and in the instructions, it does not say how to tell if you're putting too much electricity into this product. So this is a really stupid mistake from this company. And the reason that it says currently unavailable is because they're not smart. Okay. So this is a great example of a really decent product. I used it today and it was just fine. I, I powered a whole bunch of stuff for a long time, all phones and uh, uh, the television, um, just all kinds of stuff. And it, it works great. And yet it's really easy if you don't put instructions in Simple things like this, business people forget. It's like, oh, the instructions matter. And I, they had a little six-page instruction booklet, but it doesn't say how to charge it and how to know if it's too much. So this is a really good thing right here. These bullets, there are five bullets. Five bullets is just fine. So these are, these are bullets. And if you've done pers uh, copywriting of any kind, um, persuasive or not, you know what bullets are. Bullets, some people don't read copy at all. They only read bullets. So bullets are super important in selling a product. So what a bullet what a bullet should do, it should be a massive benefit to me. A massive benefit. You could say, like, you know, Tomek is a really brilliant producer. Okay. So so Tomek, that's he's a brilliant producer. That's cool. That's a feature. So he makes everything easier for you. That's a benefit. Makes sense? He's brilliant. This is what color it is. This is I have a question. So you've proposed that at the beginning, we have to write our benefits for customers, not stricter technical information in our subtitles, right? Technical information is super important. You want to have that. Um, it's okay to have the information higher up on the page because a lot of people are very smart buyers and they know the difference between products. So that's okay. But I'm not going to read that first, all right? What I'm going to read are the bullets, and I'm the average consumer, all right? So I'm going to look at the bullets, and I'm going to see, uh, There's a, it says here, uh, guys, this, this stinks even in English. Okay, so um, pure sine wave supports most laptops. Okay, it doesn't tell me what it supports. It just says it supports laptops and phones. It needs to say, you can run your laptop off of this, all day long, for example, or for 10 hours, okay? This is one of the reasons why I'm going to buy this product. Ding, 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 ding. It's like, and now I've got five of them. And it can easily say, by the way, because this has 350 watts of power or because this is 6.4 pounds or because it, whatever, the, whatever the features are. But features and benefits obviously are very different things. Features describe something. Benefits are what I get out of it. And the third and most important thing is the experience, okay? So when I'm using this product, do I feel good about it? Feel. Wow. Feel. Um, people will do anything to go with what they feel and not benefits. And people will do anything for benefits over features. Feel, benefits, features, okay? So that's the, that's the order. So I have to feel comfortable buying this, know I'm making a right decision, be positive I'm making a right decision. It should tell me that, but it doesn't. And I'm not going to go through this copy because the rest of it's terrible. But but that's one of the problems that this company has is they don't have good copy. It's not selling me. It's not persuasive in any way. So that's a shame. But this is an example of a nice set of pictures. Go ahead and show some of these pictures they've got. Really good pictures. Okay, so you can look at this. And here's your product. It's a beautiful photo of a product. It even has bananas and an orange behind it. Okay. Is that cool? That's good thinking. I like that. We all like bananas and oranges and bread. This is smart. It has the phones off to the right side. Beautiful. The photo is perfect. So Carolina, for your photo, this is great. But let's look at the junk here. Okay. Drone camera mini fridge. I can use a drone on this eight times. Eight times what? What does eight times mean? I can fly it eight times. Could I fly it to Russia? Could I fly it to Ukraine? Could I fly it to Germany? It doesn't tell you what it means. I can use a camera 16 times. Okay, once again, what does that mean? Like if I click it once, does that really, this machine is going to die after I click it 16 times? Makes no sense to me. I can plug in a mini fridge for seven hours. I believe I get that part, okay? We go to the laptops 15 times. What does it mean? I can use the phone 29 times. So I can use the phone 29 times, but I can only use the camera on the phone 16 
something is wrong with the math here. Okay. And then what I love most of all is when they, they misspelled the word switch. Okay. That that's not actually an English word. Actually, it almost looks Polish because there's five consonants. Okay. And one, one vowel. So this almost looks like a Polish word, yeah. but it doesn't exist, but whatever it means, I've never, I have no idea what switch means and 49 times. So we have here a beautiful photo, which is great. And we have people who don't know how to speak the language that they're selling the product in. And they don't describe what times means. I have no, I honestly have no clue at all what that means. This is a terrible, terrible piece of copywriting. And we don't even need to look any further. I'm not going any further because nobody else is going to either. And that's why it's currently unavailable. Amazon, I'm sure, is looking at taking this off. So there's, that's an example. So let's go look at another one. Let's look at something that somebody does right. Ah, this is the Iowa. So this product is one that came four days ago. Um, it is, it's been reviewed by 13 of us who are Vine reviewers. And it's, it's a good product. I gave it five stars um, because it's beautiful. And here's what's really cool. It says Iowa Exos 5 wireless speaker. By the way, Amazon is very keyword driven, okay? Keyword driven. Mm -hmm. So... I suppose Allegra is also, Allegro is also keyword driven. This is a pretty good example of keywords being used correctly for Amazon's algorithm. I don't know about Allegro's. For that, Tomek would probably have a good answer for you guys. Um, but anyway, it's really good. It's unleashed the sound, powerful sound, versatile connectivity on the go, Bluetooth freedom. It tells me I can use Bluetooth. Cool. That's great because I can have my phone here and plug it over there. I love it. Um, it's got a clock. It's got a little radio. And... This is a very beautiful product. Very beautiful. I gave it away yesterday to one of my best friends. Um, I have a better product, which doesn't do very well on Amazon at all because the copywriting is terrible for that product. But this one has beautiful copywriting, fantastic copywriting, a good photo, good set of photos, but it's only an okay product. Okay. So, so, but this gives you a good example of what, what it should look like. There's your, there's your picture. And then you have your keyword driven um, headline. Now, Tomek, I have a question for you. Does Allegro use um, a keyword-driven system as well? Yes, but uh, we have a little more limitation uh, because uh, the title is very important, but the title on Allegro has the limitation up to uh, 50 characters. Uh, so it's impossible to use uh, as many keywords as on Amazon. Right. I get it. So you have six words. That is a very, very limiting feature for sure. Um, in that case, then you're going to have to really, now you become an editor, uh, like a, a, a brain editor, like what are the only six, five or six words that matter here? All right. So this, by the way, is a good exercise here. So if a, if a person is going to be familiar with Iowa, in this case, we would keep the, that is a keyword on there. It's only four characters, right? So we don't lose much. And then we would want powerful speaker, powerful and speaker. People who know Iowa creates this, these kind of devices would, would want a good speaker and they'd want one that's powerful, something that's going to be really loud, okay? And if they're playing rap music, they can stay in another country, right? All right. So as we go down, it, it could also say something like Bluetooth, which would be super important. Here we have our five bullets. Do you guys have, is it uh, typically five bullets, Tomek? At, on Allegro, you, you have uh, those similar things. Uh, you have uh, an numeration and bullets. You, you can use it. Perfect. So, so as you can see, now watch this. Experience a captivating audio experience. Wow. Experience. Ah, I get to experience something. Experience benefits features. Most important thing in the world. When, when you go to a restaurant, you want it to be cool. You want the ambiance to be nice. You want to have it meet your expectations so you have a comfortable, good, wonderful time. That's more important than the fact that the chairs are blue, okay? Right? So the chairs are blue, but they are very comfortable to sit in, thus giving you a great experience, and you look good to everybody around you, all right? So this is beautifully written copy with the exact same concept as what our other product was, done poorly. But here we talk about experiences and benefits all the way down. So just to pick a random one here, we'll go with the last one. The It says the Iowa Exos 5 is designed with user convenience in mind. Wow. So a dumb person like me can use it. I love it. That's what I need to know. All right. So 
this is perfectly written copy. This is one of those things that people should actually look at. This product will sell a ton on Amazon once it gets the final stamp of approval after the early reviewers have reviewed it. So just for the heck of it, go down just a little bit and look at some of the photos. Let's just check and see if they did a good job with that. Okay, this is great. So what this does is it shows me through multiple angles what each um, what each button is for. That's really cool. And very few companies do this right now. Most of them just put the camera and they'll describe it off to the side. But this is really nice. Bluetooth, FM, menu, back. What else is on there? Rewind, tuning, and forward. So this is actually perfectly done. It's essentially brilliant. So what they've done is a great job here. And it, the pictures do a good job in matching the text. This will be a great selling product. It will do really well for a long time. All right. Let's go ahead and switch now to the third um, the third item that we put up. So here's, here's a product um, that I bought or I picked up uh, to review about a, a week ago. Um, as you can see, it's got lots of ratings. I just got this one week ago, one week. I really want to explore this ad because how does something get 318 reviews in a week? There's lessons to be had here, okay? This is a planner where you use handwriting, pens and pencils and things like that. But it's sold thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of copies in one week. All right? That's pretty cool. So the first thing we see here is, is that there's multiple colors that you have available. That's an important thing. People love to have different colored things and uniqueness and all that. That's really cool. Now let's go down and let's just look and see how they describe this with, with words and with pictures. It's actually brilliant and beautiful. You wouldn't think so with a planner, but this is really... Now, if you have a planner, just be thinking about it. You want to know what it looks like so you can tell, is this the kind of a planner that I would use? There's two kinds of people that use planners. There's people at the office that work at a regular job that have um, timed things like, we got to do the event at 8 o'clock this morning. Okay, 8 o'clock this morning, we start on time 100% of the time. That goes into the planner for that person. For the other person is an entrepreneur, the person who is in business for yourself. That would be you guys. That would be me. I don't necessarily care what time it is. I work until I'm done. All right. So I work and I work and I work and I work. And now the projects are done for the day, which I see that even though it's time driven, it's still project uh, friendly. So beautiful. Perfect. It also has all it has a nice background. This is great photo. Now let's go down one. So this is really well done. And this is how you want to be thinking, like, what's the person going to be looking for when they when they're looking for this planner. And just, we want to get the next set of uh, images. All right, this is so nice because this is a planner. It's a simple thing. There's no words in it, right? But look at this, the picture, the third one from the left. It's got the pages curled. So you could actually sort of see if you were to, and don't do it, but if you were to enlarge it, you'd be able to see closer what was on various parts of the page. That's really smart artist, um, artistic thinking on the part of the person who wrote, wrote and took the photos for all this. It has the, you see benefits there. Oh, I can stick my pen in the side and it'll hold my pen so I don't have to stick it in my, in my purse or my pocket or my wallet or whatever. And then on the right-hand side, it's 2024. So I got plenty of time to get it. I'm good to go. See, all this is beautifully thought out, well-considered. Now let's go down one more. And this will be the last photo that we'll look at. If you have your product and it's, it's simply a book or something like this, why not have two, one with gold, one with silver? Okay, that's pretty smart. All right, pretty smart because most people will like the gold or the platinum, if you will. All right, one of the two. And it's, of course, got a pen. We've got their camera here. Pair of glasses. Why? Because people who read or look at the computer all day usually need to have glasses. Or we spend a lot of money on surgery that leaves us worse off. So, so anyway, so this is beautifully done. This is going to sell tons this year. And it's so well put together. It would do great on Allegro and it would do a, great on Amazon because it's really perfectly written all experience, all benefits, almost no features. So this is beautiful. So we're good to go on the photos. We can let everything go now. We don't need any more links. Kevin, I, I have one question about this product. Uh, I have read your review and um, uh, you write that uh, functional Sunday, Saturday is better. Why? 
Oh, because I'm Jewish. Um, so, so, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sim- simple as that. And uh, so in my mind, when I look at something that starts with Monday and ends with Sunday, it just it doesn't work in my mind. So I, I was letting the company know, you know, Sunday through Saturday is ideal and excellent. I think they have it that way. And I think I said it was excellent. Okay. But for some uh, business purposes, it, it, it might be better? For business purposes at, that, at the corporate office, absolutely. But not for the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur gets in this. If the entrepreneur gets in the mentality that they're going to work a five-day week and have two days off, they will just go broke immediately. They're going to just not make money. Okay. <laughs> right. I was consulting with a roofing company in California this year. And uh, the owner, he, he told me, he says, he says, yeah, we work hard. We work Monday through Friday from eight to six. And I'm like, what about you though? Like, what do you do? And he says, well, he says, I take the weekend off and I go to the beach and I take, I take my wife and kids to the beach. I said, both days. Okay. We're in trouble here. All right. So, so if, if you're an entrepreneur, you really have to start out aggressively. And the two days at the end, uh, Saturday and Sunday, is much better for the corporate environment. And even then, they still have a lot of corporations are uh, Sunday through Saturday anyway. But most of the stuff downtown in city center is not, right? I mean, most of the corporations, they leave the light on, but there's nobody home. So great question. I'm heavily biased is what this amounts to. Okay, so I have a question. Which words we have to use to be more persuasive with our offers? Mm -hmm. You told us that it's very cool to use subtitles about benefits for us, but which one, which words use or something like that? Which strategies of persuasion used for that? Mm -hmm. So I remember one day, let, let me use an example from something that you and I did, okay? So when, when we were up, I think it was in Wrocław, um, we were walking around one day in, in, in the town square, right? In, in the city, sort of city market area, okay? And now I'm going to describe it to you in three different ways, okay? Yeah. Three different ways that afternoon. We took hundreds of photographs, hundreds of publicity shots, all kinds of stuff. So number one, city center was laid out in a way that's approximately one half, um, one, one kilometer by one kilometer with buildings that resemble what it might have been like in the city when it was a German city 400 years ago. Okay. Now, to me, that's pretty boring. Those are features, right? Aha. So you go to city center and all of a sudden you see these beautiful old buildings that can't possibly be there because the city has only been built in the last, uh, 70 years or 80 years, 80 years, you know, since World War II. So, so it's really cool that you actually get this feel of old time Wrocław, right? And as you, as you look around, you don't just see old buildings, but you see these little gnomes. You see these little gnomes, elves, if you will, all over the ground. And, um, and so, so unlike most cities in the world, it's not just a city center that looks cool. It also has a personality, and this personality of this city and several others in Poland too, but this one in particular has gnomes all around, like these elves. I don't know what the right word would be for this language, but that's that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, okay, so that's benefits. That's better. See the feel, the difference? Now watch this. So Caroline and I were walking one day, and we were doing publicity shots, and we were trying to figure out what would make the coolest stuff that would make... Um, our, our, our fans excited that they could come here and do and be part of this event. So I would get down on the ground next to the, the gnomes and I would look over one of the gnomes and you got this, you got this sort of feeling that Kevin's like this little teeny gnome next to all the rest of the gnomes. In fact, it was so well liked that a woman about six months later saw the picture on Facebook and she went and took the exact same photo that we did six months later. And that's how, how, how ex- Experience resonates with people. So it was a wonderful day. We saw all this cool stuff, but it was more than just a cool city. It had personality that made you feel good inside. All right. So we see the three levels. So it's not so much the word, it's um, the intention of how we're describing it. Okay. So every language has words, specific words that are going to mean more than in another country, okay, in another in another language. The Polish language is, is um, incredibly complex for uh, the rest of the world because 
of this inc- of, of this insane amount of consonants per word. So, so I've I've really struggled with the Polish language over the years. Um, but for people who live there, don't try to find the right word because it's a persuasive word, but rather look for the description that brings out the feeling inside of the person first, and then what they get out of it second. Then that's all you really need. A few features. It doesn't really matter how many square kilometers it is, right? It really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter exactly the number of years old that the buildings look like. It doesn't really matter, okay? But what's really cool is that they're like red and yellow and green and blue and red and yellow and pink. I mean, it's just cool. It makes you feel good with being there. And it's an amazing feeling. And uh, it's like that now all over Poland, and I love it. So anyhow, so you can see the, the experience is so good, I keep wanting to come back. Um, so you're looking for not the word, but the idea that makes the feeling. You're looking for feelings and then benefits. Okay, so we have to show feelings which we can create in our minds, right? Absolutely, yep. I have next question. You know, in Allegro... I saw the situation that people have their shop with many products. And, for example, in a situation that sales don't want to create any simple offer with accurate details and benefits about the product on display. Um, this may be because this vendor simply doesn't know the product that well um they has they have never used it um the sells different products in mass the sellers can deal with drop shipping for example um, what is your advice in this situation for example should uh, um, for example should such a person choose a few best selling deals and match them other these guidelines or how else can this person use these techniques to improve um, these offerings so i i have to i have to get a clarification before i answer the question You're, you're saying that that people who are doing drop shipping, which is a lot of people at Allegro, no doubt, okay? So person places the order and they Allegro or um, uh, Allegro then ships it out. Or who ships it? Is it the is it the company or is it Allegro that's shipping it? It's usually it's other company. Okay, again, okay. So for example, we have a few um, people um, um, who are sellers on Allegro. Yeah, uh, we have big shops um, who has many products and they don't have specialist knowledge about these products. And uh, we have small sellers who sell a few products and can focus on those products. And for example, people uh, who have a few products can focus more on the title, text and whatever. And what if we have full offers um, or, for example, we have drop shipping, and we accept offers from another store and how we can do that? Because it's a little bit, um, it's not <laughs> a little bit, it's a very big job to do it. So how we can do that? So how we can do it? Uh, can I add some additional information? Please tell me, yes. Uh, because I think, okay, I think that uh, Carolina want to ask uh, how to do if you have, uh, I don't know, 20,000 of offers. Yeah. Because because uh, because I'm working as a, uh, in dropshipping mm-hmm. and I just connect to other wholesalers and uh, just in one minute I can have uh, 20,000 of offers and how to work with some big amount of offers. For me, it's really difficult or impossible. Me too. Um, right. As a customer, I don't necessarily, I mean, I might care what company it is. Maybe, maybe. But when you're, when you're, when you're selling multiple products, when you're selling many products, you expect that not people aren't going to go and then buy all the rest of the products or even one or two that are in your store unless it goes with it. Recently, I painted. Um, with a friend of mine, several rooms in the house here. 
uh, four actually. Um, and so you need paint and you need brushes. Okay. Brushes, right. And you have to have uh, pails or um, uh, painting bins, you know, to put the roller in and you have to have rollers and you have to have turpentine to clean off your hands and get all the paint off your hands. So in this case, each, there's a number of products in the store that actually help you when, once you've bought the paint, because it helps you remind you that, oh, this plus this plus this actually gives you your whole paint job. But if you were selling two perfumes, ah, I love this company. So it's Chanel, right? So I've got Chanel. I'm the owner of Chanel and I'm selling, um, God, I used to know all of these and I don't anymore. So, uh, yeah, Chanel oh, number five, for example. Mm-hmm. So, so, so here we have Chanel number five and here we have Chanel number six. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So I, I got it. It's been a while. So, so here we have five and here we have six. Well, here's the deal. We don't care. Right. Nobody cares. It's like once the girl grabs Chanel number five, she doesn't go and look for number six and she doesn't want to think about mascara and she's not thinking about like her husband's beard or nothing else, you know? So you have to be thinking like, I'm going to draw you a picture about how I want you to do these kind of solve these kind of problems. All right. I have a red pen. If I bought it from, a, I could also then buy a blue pen right next to it. Right. All right. A, blue, a pen that writes in blue. All right. But so here's the deal. When you have more than one product on the same page, these are the products that we want everybody to buy. So these products are going to be bigger and all the rest of this stuff down here, we really don't care because we don't make as much money on it, for example. So these are the ones that are going to be at the top. People do not buy. The more choices they have, the fewer products they purchase. Okay? Write that down. That's like the most important thing you'll ever learn. All right? If you have more than three options, more than three options. For example, there's Tomek. I think everybody sees it like this. Tomek, Carolina, Kevin. All right? So... Three is great, but if one more person was here, it screws everything up. Think about it like this. This afternoon, I was having lunch, and there was four of us. And sometimes two of us would break into conversation, right? Because with three, everybody's involved in the conversation. But with four, lit, correct? So think think like that for the rest of your life. Never put four products in a line. Never put, put four products near each other even. I mean... Pin big pictures of the products you want to sell, and then little teeny pictures, kind of like on Zoom, you know, like there's Kevin, and then there's all these little teeny people down here, like they're like the elves in in in, in So so really, and if you do that, then people will focus on that top line. But the top line has to be three or two. Three is actually the perfect number, and I'll show you how to do this. If you have three similar products, one of them is going to be fifties lotties, three hundreds lotties. And 75 Zlotties, okay? So for pricing, this is actually a pretty valuable tool. You always want your most expensive product in the middle because it makes the products on either side of the, on either side of the expensive product look very inexpensive, okay? This will make you a lot of money. And here's the hilarious thing. You may not even be trying to sell this one, okay? but people will buy it about 17% of the time, about 17% of the time people buy this incredibly expensive product. That's sandwiched between these two tiny little numbers. Why? Because they want the most expensive. Why? Because you get what you pay for, right? That's something that a lot of people believe and a lot of people think this is a devilishly cool marketing technique. Okay. Simple, big number in the middle, lower ones on the side, and 17% of the time, the big one in the middle sells. So I don't like a lot of products on a page. Three, that's it. So put a little Zoom pictures of all the rest of them if you have to have 10 or 20. Does that help? For example, I do the same than maximum free offers because our mind don't can focus to more offers. Yeah, I like this, right? That's the deal. Now where do you want to go to? Tomek, do you have any questions? I have a lot of questions, but sorry, a little break for advertising now. It's a Polish edition of your book. Uh, Nauka Perswazy, czyli jak w 8 minut postawić na swoim. But I, uh, the English title is a little better for me. The Science of Influence, How to Get Anyone to Say Yes in 8 Minutes or Less. And I have a big question for you, Kevin. 
Eight minutes. Why so long? It seems like eternity. 20 years ago, I convinced one mo- woman to become my fiance in less, and I waiting for answer, answer less than five seconds. Okay. Eight minutes. Too long. For, that's so beautiful. Five seconds, you got the answer? Did you, did you do it at the same time? Or even a little less. A little less than five seconds? I love it. That's fabulous. Um, first of all, congratulations. How long have you been married, by the way? Uh, about 20 years now. 20 years? Okay. All right. I, I did that too, just not in the same person. So um, I thought about I thought about um, putting um, five minutes or less. I thought about seven, which is in some countries the perfect number. However, now, this is this is a simple secret. In Asia, which is where I was really trying to reach with this book, um, China, Japan, Indonesia, uh, all along the Pacific Rim, the number eight is a lucky number, and it's considered really lucky. Like, this is important here. And just like in the United States, we like seven. And I mean, every country sort of has their set of numbers. Um, in Italy, they like 13. I don't know why, but they do. You know, when I went there and everything was 13, I'm like, what is going on here? Meanwhile, in Bulgaria, if you give somebody 12 roses, like in America, that means you love them. In Bulgaria, it means that there's a funeral that day. Okay. So, so I was really trying to sell the, the Pacific Rim with this title. And because the reality is, is that most people should say yes very, very quickly if I've done my job of being a good person. If people trust and believe and they're certain in you, you should be able to get a yes very, very fast. However, I needed to sell China. And, it, and by the way, the book did great in Japan. We sold, holy smokes, um, a lot. I, I don't recall the exact number. I hesitate to say a number, but we did wonderful on the Pacific Rim. So a lot of my titles, you'll see numbers in them, and it's really depending on who I really want to buy that book in the world. Like, I don't just think like United States centric. You know, I don't th- think of just the U.S. I think of all over the world. Where do I want to go? <laughs> really, you know, like where do I want to go next? What where's the place that I want to visit? Where do I want to get hired? So this time it was Asia. You know, and I did get hired in Indonesia. I'm going to be going to Bali. Uh, either later on this autumn or uh, early spring. So you never know. Things can work out. So that's the answer. That's how come. So so people should think about numbers when they're when they're uh, writing descriptions for their product. Um, and you're right. Uh, by the way, five seconds is very, very fast. You know, Tomek, the first time I got married, I've done it a few times. Mm-hmm. The first time I got married, we're drive. girl and me are driving in a car, Katie. So we're driving in the car. We're going down the street. And um, I pull over to the side of the road and I said, Katie, and I pull out a ring. I have a ring. And I said, would you marry me? And she said, well, I'll have to think about it. So I put the car in park, right? And she said, what are you doing? Giving you time to think about it. So I, 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 put, I put a CD in. I think I'm in love by Eddie Money. And a really good song. You know, I mean, I've never played it before in my life before, but I wanted to have the right song. Right? I think I'm in love. Dude. So we're put, I put it there. And I, and I turned the song down after I had it up. And I said, okay, so what's the answer? What do you think? Yes or no? She says, I guess so. <laughs> I said, are you sure? And she said, yes. I said, good enough for me. I go, there you go. Put it on. And, and she's like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Blah, 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 blah. We made two babies. They became a psychologist and a scientist, a data scientist. I don't know. Who knows? So that was that was a quick thing. I told her for... Uh, I shouldn't even tell you, but I had known her for about uh, 12 days, I think. Okay. And uh, because people really do find out quickly whether you're not you're interested, like, is the magnetism potentially there or no? It either is or it isn't. So, but that's all for a different conversation. We can have a couple of glasses of wine over that one, Tomek. Conversation about uh, women, about uh, dates, about it. Uh, okay. Uh, but we, we have to talk without Carolina. Exactly. That's the whole deal. Right. <laughs> Secret. Uh, but um, uh, coming back to our, to our top. Yeah. Uh, online on, online sales. Imagine that, that you meet a, a beginner seller that want to start selling on marketplace. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine, uh, I don't know, uh, free advices, uh, what to do to... Um, they have some products. Uh, I don't know, for example, trash bags. People have trash bags. Now, do they have the right trash bags in their company? The right trash bags, by the way, before we go to the sell it, okay, 
first of all, they have to be strong enough to hold until I get out to the garbage can, right? All right, that's number one. They have to be strong. Number two, if it, they have a scent um, and a, a pleasant smell, that's a huge benefit to me, okay? Because I take out the trash every day. So I want it to smell good. If it doesn't smell good, it doesn't exist in my house, okay? So that's another thing that really matters. Another thing I like is I like the draw strings, the strings that actually allow you to tie it tightly, okay, together. So when I put it in the trash can, it doesn't stink no matter what because only once each week do they come. Now I have now I have my trash bag reinvented, and now I'm going to put it online. And so I'm going to think, aha, we're going to give him a good experience because the person who's taking out the trash is her husband, okay? It's her husband, all right? So if the husband's going to take it out, you want him to really take it out, which means you want it to be strong because if it's not strong, he will complain. So you want to be able to advertise strong enough for anyone to care, to, to hold or, or strong enough to hold up to 40 pounds, uh, to, uh, 20 kilos of garbage, for example. If you produce that kind of garbage, that's a lot of garbage. Um, and so so, the, so these are our, our experience benefits and features, right? So we have each of these things. It's, it's, so it's a nice, a pleasant scent. So it's not a chore. So it's not difficult work. It's another beautiful little piece of mental imagery, right? It's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it smells good enough that it's not even a chore. Oh, honey, really, it's not hard for you to do this because it smells so good. And, and of course, this makes total sense in the buyer's mind, right? It's like, I'm not taking the trash out. Yet. So, so this is how we do it. So I would tell the person, to first of all make sure they have the perfect products already here and then i would look at those what are the three there's three benefits right it's like it's got the drawstrings which is exactly what a guy wants we don't i i have no idea what's in this trash bag do i really want to be sitting here like trying to push it further down and then t- try to tie the whole thing with hand to side to side and then like this no that's disgusting so so i want those three things and i'm going to itemize that so my product, I'm going to look at my product, make sure it's a good product, and then I'm going to use all the things um, that it has, the fe- the features that it has. It smells, it has a scent to it. It's uh, able to hold a lot of garbage, um, a lot of weight, and it has the drawstrings, those three things, which is perfect. That's all it takes to sell a, something. And maybe the size, which would be uh, uh, 26 liters, something like that, 20. 20- 28 liters, whatever, but that's, and that's a nice, that's a nice piece of information. Cause then, you know, if it'll fit, um, if it'll fit, I don't know what you call it there. Um, if the, the trash bag, the trash receptacle in the house, whatever that's called. Um, so, so that's how I would go about it. I would tell them, I go look at your product and think, what are the benefits? Like, and if you don't know what the benefits are, don't go online and try to sell it until you know what the benefits are and what experience we're trying to give. Be patient one extra day, right? Just be patient one extra day and figure it all out. Okay. And someone start to selling on marketplace garbage bags and uh, they find out that more than 1,000 sellers sells the same. And how to prepare for competitors? Yeah. So, so this is real tough online because you can always compete on price, right? But I hate competing on price. So what can we do to make it unique this is the, the, here's the question everybody has to ask. Okay, what is the dramatic difference between me and my competitor? What is the dramatic difference? The dramatic difference, not the difference, but the dramatic difference between me and my competitor. Okay, ten thousand speakers out there. You can hire anybody you want. What's the dramatic difference? But now he's a garbage bag. Wow. So we have to have shown something with our garbage bag. If we don't have one, I always tell people you should have two things about your product or you, one of the two, okay, um, that makes you special and unique. So I'll give you an example with guitar strings because I don't have one yet for the garbage bags, but I will. So with guitar strings, strings that go on a guitar, all right, there is a a specific kind of strings that Eric Clapton, uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, most of the rock guitarists use. They're called Ernie's ball strings. It's a go figure. You could buy the Fender strings. You could buy the Gibson strings, but no, the the big guys, the guys who make the money over the last 40 years, they buy Ernie's ball strings. Why? I I have them all in my house. 
Um, there's just a little different, maybe a little different, but I bought it because all these guys bought it, right? So if I were going to do it and I didn't have a difference, I would create a difference and I would give my, I would give my trash bags to 10 people who have some clout with the home, the, the person who buys the product with a woman. So I would guess women typically would be the person, people who would buy um, garbage bags along with pretty much everything else that goes in the kitchen. So with that in mind, then I would say as used by this hospital or this uh, Chanel, Chanel, or as used by this company or as used by this famous person who I really adore, okay, like over here. So I would find something like that because that's not a feature of the product but it's a feature of the marketing then. So a long time ago, um, I started to buy gold, gold coins, a long time ago. And uh, the guy that I bought them from, I bought them from, from for years. And so I would collect gold. And the reason I bought them from him is he, he was a fan. He was a Kevin Hogan fan. He says, hey, Kev, can I get your autograph? You know what I'm like? Yeah, sure, no problem. So I sent him my autograph photo, right? Not that good of a photo. Not worth putting on your wall. Not even close. So, so here, so 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 I autograph all. So I autograph the photo. I says I want you to autograph a photo for me. He says I don't think you want a picture of me. And I said, well, it's okay. Send it. It turned out he was a burn victim. He had been burned in his face. Half half of his face was burned. So it was like this, and he looked very very hard to look at. It was very difficult. And he had written it to Kevin. Love his name. Okay, I'll just leave his name alone. So so it was really sweet. And so I put the picture up, you know, and I love, I love images. I love pictures. And so I had it up for probably five years and I bought probably 30 ounces of gold, which is a lot of, um, a lot of money over the years. And I did that because he was such a good guy. And because I really wanted to empathize with him and show that because he was hard to look at, made him more attractive and interesting to me as opposed to less interesting. So you take that back. Gold coins are gold coins, roughly the same, no matter who you buy them from. Okay. But there's always a reason. So if it's not about the coin, then it's about the person or about somebody who uses the product. And with garbage bags, that's a, t- that's a great question because it's really hard to imagine. But there's somebody out there who had dropped all of their garbage one day that has a story to tell. I was having a party at Kim Kardashian would have been great at this. Her house looks like my house. It's, it's perfectly white everywhere on the floor, totally white, pure white. And I'm keeping up with the Kardashians one night. They asked her, they said, so why did you get a pure white floor? Because all it takes is one little drip of wine and your floor is ruined. And she smiled and she said, you got it. You understand. And I thought, I'm going to change the color of my carpeting. 14 years ago, I changed the color of my carpeting. It's pure white everywhere in the house. Okay. But uh, I just want to um, specify something. The seller can have really the same product, the same product that uh, that have over 1,000 other sellers. It, it's the same. No difference be- between some products, the same com- but the same producer, the same color, the same everything. Uh, how to try to differentiate uh, uh, amongst others competitor if you have really the same product and uh, the companies are even very similar. They send products really quickly. They don't make any mistakes. Uh, the price is uh, really similar. How, how to make a difference? I think there's a lot of ways to do that. The if you have the exact same product, then then there's things that you can do with your advertising. You could use a symbol which would represent ecological, for example. Perhaps it's green. Okay, that might be helpful for some people. It might be the opposite of what other people want, but it might be helpful for some people. Okay, usually liberal people are very much into eco. Conservative people typically aren't, right? So, so you would have a demographic now that would be more likely to buy your product just because it's green. In fact, we know this. I mean, we know this from research. If something is green, people are more likely to buy it for no good reason whatsoever, other than it had a symbol showing that it was green. Okay, so that that's where I would start. And then the, the next thing I would do would be um, this comp- uh, the Your purchase of this these garbage bags um, will allow us to 
do charitable work in your community, you know, in, in the city of Warsaw, you know, and then commit to a certain dollar figure that you're going or to a certain Zloty number that you're going to do um, each year. And then put that in the at the very bottom of the description say. You know, this organization will make a donation of 1% of all of our proceeds in the course of every single year. All of a sudden, you become better than every other single, every other person. And today, God, we, we've got lots of things to give uh, money to. Um, Carolina helped me with a, uh, uh, we, we actually did a lot of work on a fundraiser, what, almost a year ago now for Ukraine and families in Poland. And uh, yeah. Right. And we, I think we had it, we got enough money to help about 30 families, as I recall. That's that's a great way to differentiate yourself. There is doing something good for the community that really matters. You know, it doesn't. You don't always have to share it with the world, but sometimes it pays to share it with the world. Thank you. Great answer. Uh, I want to go a little more in in this area of our customer and how to sell. I think that it's really difficult, but help helpful. It will be find out uh, who are your customers, and my first answer is. Everyone want to buy uh, garbage bags, you know, everyone needs it, but it's really difficult to make marketing for everyone. <laughs> Coca-Cola maybe can do it. Okay. Everyone drink Coca-Cola. Um, how to find out uh, who are your customers? Well, this is interesting. So I'll have a question for you. When you're with Allegro, is it like Amazon? With Amazon, you don't know who buys your product unless they review it. Okay. So. Let me ask you this. The first question is, is can, can you review at Allegro? Can the customers review? I have a lot of data about our customers. I know uh, names, the address. I know the gender, but I d- don't know how old is the, the customer. Uh, but I can find out customer for a small city or for uh, from a big city. A lot of data I can extract for this data. Yeah, demographic, well, what we call psychographic data, which is Demographic data is how old a person is, whether they're male or female, you know, um, what, whether they live in, in a suburb uh, where more conservatives would live, in a city where more liberals would live. Um, all of that is super important. And today, like in Poland right now, um, Poland has never gone through a phase quite like it is right now with so much conservative power in the government. It's a very, very conservative uh, a government right now. So, so it's really worth knowing like is, is is the audience in the city center area, which is typically Democrat, li- uh, liberal, liberal. And then as you get further away from the city, it tends to be more conservative. So a conservative message would help us more. And the question is, is how do we get the data? Well, you have the data. So that means I would assume that other people can access the data through Allegro. Is that correct? I can get information about our customer from my own data uh, because I... After every transaction, I have all information about uh, my customer. Ah, okay. Yeah, sure, because you know where you're sending the package to. Yes. Ah, got it. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, we should be able to easily select. Um, oh, yeah, this is not hard at all. It. So, so once you have the data of where you're shipping your stuff to, you can literally put it up on the map on the wall, and you can see, are you in Warsaw? Are you in Warsaw? Are you outside of the, the city, right? And by the way, I like... I, I like to target um, where there's not a lot of people. I, I would much rather start off as a as a uh, a big fish in a little teeny pond, a big fish in a little teeny pond, right? Like I just I just sell my product to Wrocław, for example, just to Wrocław, and I focus all of my attention on Wrocław or outside of Wrocław, okay, in the suburbs around it, and I would try to become number one there because eventually I'll find people who become like fans of our garbage bags that we're selling. You know, there's there's going to be people that are like, this is actually working. And we can actually find out without going too far, right? We can actually like, we can use data. We can take surveys and those are helpful. But more importantly, you can get endorsements. And it's really important to for, for people to ask the right question when you're the company and say, you know, did you find that, um, did you find that the garbage bag uh, held the trash um, safely or something like that. And then the next question would be, did you find that the pl- that the uh, scent of the garbage bag was pleasant? Okay. Because nobody else's garbage may, oh, in your case, you're, you're asking me what if they're the same? Cool. But they still don't have the information on their website. You do on your um, page on their, on Allegro. So you're putting information from perhaps 
the customers, and perhaps they're just focusing on something else. So this gives us a chance to use the demographic data and put it there. But I also would seriously think, especially right now, when um, when you have governments like our in our world over here in the United States, we've got two crazy people. Like we've got a, we got a Donald Trump and we have a Joe Biden. I mean, you just can't get worse than this, you know. So they're like this far apart, you know. But one thing is for sure: when you talk to all the people out here, everybody has an opinion. And so you pick who do you want to sell to? Do you want to sell to that crazy person or this crazy person? And so it's best to create your message towards one of the two sides. That's that's and political is easiest to predict because it's city versus suburb or rural. A few thoughts. Okay, but I but uh, it will be excellent to find out what my customers have in their minds. Uh, for example, some want to buy a garbage bags who smells well, some who are extremely strong, uh, someone wants colorful trash bags. And um, it's a uh, way to find out uh, what uh, will be the most um, uh, profitable way uh, to, f- to find out the, the right um, market for me. You know, I, I can m- make a marketing for everyone, but I can just specific on on part of the market, but but trying to find out uh, how to learn something about uh, what my customer have in their minds. Historically, well, because we're online on a, on a platform like Allegro, it's actually not that hard to do because this week we would uh, market with a headline that specifically gears it towards, you know, this is the strongest trash bag, blah, 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 like that. And then the next week we would focus on you know, never just taking out the trash have to be a smelly affair again. And then we could put it the following week, we could test a headline that would be geared towards um, holds holds all kinds of garbage, easy, oh, drawstrings, drawstrings, the uh, drawstrings so you don't have to touch the inside of the garbage. One of those is going to sell better than the other. One of them will sell the lowest. So then you, you, you flip it and you test it the other way, the reverse order, okay? Because it never go with just one test because it's not enough. A million things can happen in one test, but in two, that reverse testing. Um, so instead of ABC, it goes CBA for the next three weeks, right? So then we now we know specifically what's going to work. This is the easiest way to work is to sell, is to test the headline. That's typically the, the first answer. The second answer would be, and I, I find it hard to believe we would get this far down, but if it got to the second thing, which would be the photograph of the item, it is possible that that could be the second thing. If that's the case, if we find out, then the question is, is creativity about a photo? So the question then would be, is like, would a picture of a man holding the garbage bag versus a picture of a woman holding the garbage bag, picture of a man with his dog looking up at him holding the garbage bag, picture of a woman holding the baby while the husband is grabbing the garbage bag, taking it out. All right. So we just hit all three things that we know sell in images, women, dogs, and not men. <laughs> Human dogs and babies. So those are the things. So creativity and photography is really super important and really easy. Between those two things, if we can't figure out which one is the best, we've really screwed up bad. So we can do it. We can figure that part out. Okay. Thank you. I think it's a really great idea for testing uh, what works, what really really works in sales. Okay. Um, So do you have any question, Tomek? Because for me, it's enough today. Kevin, maybe you have some question for us. I do. Allegro, um, so so they're competing with Amazon. How are they competing? You said that it's better from the consumer perspective and the business perspective because they don't drive you towards a product. So what is the what is Allegro's benefit to the consumer to be as I buy stuff on Allegro? Why why do I want to be there? In Poland, first, is, I think it's similar, uh, like in Amazon, is safety for the customers. Allegro really care about the, the customers. And for example, in Poland, on Allegro sells more than uh, 120,000 sellers. It's, it's wow. really uh, big amount. Enormous. And uh, it's the biggest, it's one of the biggest marketplace all over the world. Uh, of, of course, Amazon is the biggest, but Allegro in our part of Europe is, is yeah. really big. 
And in the past, in the past, Amazon and eBay tried to uh, make a big entry to our country, but they fail. Um, Allegro has some concept or some really big marketing in Poland, and it really works good. But from the perspective of customers, it's uh, it's good because um, it's easier to find out the right product on Allegro than in on Amazon. It's it's my own experience, but I'm not an expert uh, how Amazon works. It's uh, just my, my experience. In Poland, I also can buy. It's a Polish version of Amazon. I I, I can buy things, and it's even even if I buy something on Amazon, I have a free del- delivery. I can buy something for for one dollar. It's also free delivery, but I choose. Uh, Allegro because it's more convenient for me, even if I pay a little more. And f- from the perspective of seller, uh, Allegro is really good because everyone is on Allegro. Every, uh, in Poland, more people looking for the product starting from Allegro than from Google. Really? About uh, 33%. Pers- yes, about 30%. It's, uh, it's the data from the beginning of the year. Uh, more than uh, 33% people starting looking for the product on Allegro. About 26% people starting on Google. So uh, Allegro have a really big position in Poland. That's impressive. On Allegro, we have a customer. Um, we have more mostly free shipping. It's called Allegro Smart. Um, and when we buy products or many products in one seller by minimum 45 PLN, we have for free shipping. So many people want to buy something um, by Allegro because it's for free shipping. And maybe it's only difficult between 9 PL and, um, but it's for us very important uh, that we have free shipping. And we have situation that we have we can pay after uh, shopping because Allegro have something like pay after it's called PayPal, I think. So something like that. Mm, we can pay after 30 days and sellers uh, take this money in this same time, but we pay after these days. Like customers, we pay after. And it's in my opinion, it's a very good in all the So it's definitely, um, wow, they've done a great job there. That's amazing. Um, I remember when Amazon started there, we used Amazon when I was living over there temporarily. And uh, I used it every day. But boy, Allegro really sounds like they've figured it out, the market there. That's, a, that's, that's phenomenal. I think it's obvious that every company really has to be on Allegro. If that's, if that's your first search engine, then you just have to be there. You know, that's clear. And then, and then I think when it comes down to back to our garbage bags, I'm so sick of thinking about garbage bags, by the way, Tomek. <clears throat> but when it comes back to garbage bags, we then have to think of, are we going to rename the bag? All right. Because like, I don't know about you, but like in the United States, we have trash bags, we have garbage bags, we have receptacle bags. We have, tr- I mean, there's just different, different words for the same thing. And it, it could turn out to be a huge benefit to be, it could turn out to be a disaster, by the way, as well. But it could turn out to be a good thing if they're diff- somebody tries to test a different name for the product, you know. But you don't know if, and this is, the, this is the great thing about people who are willing to test and market. If you're willing to just take a little time, you know, and it really isn't that hard to do. Just testing a name is a super important thing to do. Just like, you know, you need to have a a rationale for something, you know, science of influence. Do I want to go with another seven? I've already done two books with a seven in it. I've done one book with a three in it. I wasn't going to do another one. So it's like, okay, we're going to go to eight. You know, I have one with 10 in it. The 10, 10. um, we, We also have, actually, we have two eights. We have eight habits of highly ineffective communicators. Again, the target audience is, uh, the Pacific Rim, you know, so, so it's worth considering, no kidding. See, you learn something new every day, right? So, so it, it, it pays off to, to try ideas like this, you know, to, to test ideas. And uh, once you find the right, once you find the right uh, title, it use title and subtitle, headline, subhead, and photo. It's going to last for a good year or two. It, it, you'll have this, you'll have the curve will go up. It'll peak eventually. And then it'll come down and then you have to come up with a new idea. 
and you'll know. I mean, it'll be exactly like that. If it's going, if it's going well, it'll go well. And then people always think, oh, it'll just go this way forever. No, it doesn't. You have to, you have to reinvent, right? Otherwise, it will just go down like this. All right. So, yeah, a few thoughts there. Thank you. I, I, I'm impressed with Allegro. That's remarkable, actually. And, for example, about marketing uh, from Allegro, I saw that they use many storytelling for customers and they advertising are really good. Really, really good. <laughs> so it's very important from Allegro that it's not only, you know, care about sellers, but mostly care about customers. So, for example, person who want to sell something in Poland online starts from Allegro because um, it's better beginner um, because they have very great and strong brand and you know on our market uh, it's fr from my perspective my story is uh, I started selling in our family company on Allegro four years ago And now I, I have my own uh, marketing company. I now uh, um, trying to help other sellers on Allegro, uh, but it's really help our company or, or help us survive on the really uh, uh, difficult market now. Uh, no so doubt. If you, if you, yeah, if you if you know how to sell on Allegro, it's it's really really a good place to start. It's really easy, and it's uh, it costs, but I think at the beginning, the cost of starting your own uh, online store is much, much bigger. Than on Allegro, you can start with zero slot. But I have uh, one more question about, um, uh, I don't know how it's on, how it works on, um, on Amazon, but on Allegro, it's really important to convince uh, your customers uh, to give you, you review after the sales. Mm -hmm. And most customers don't do it. The question is, how to convince customers to give you a review because it um, can help uh, increase your sales. It's, it's really difficult. Really? I, by my own, I tried really different methods and uh, I'm not sure what is working. I think, at this I think the, the, the best suggestion I would have would be when you pack, um, let's just say that we're selling this instead of garbage bags. So... So, so say we're selling just a little notebook, okay? So if I'm selling this notebook for five Zlotties, then I'm also going to have attached here, like um, it's going to be a little coupon for one Zloty off the next or 10% or 20% off the next purchase. And then on the back of it, which I would, and I would rotate, on the back of the coupon, it would say, if if you want to give this star, uh, if you want to give this uh, notebook a five-star review, please go to uh to now to your to your computer and or your phone and and uh give us a five star review and then we have a special gift for you on the back which would be say 20% off or literally give them a free gift if they you know if they're going to do that um it's always worthwhile being in somebody's mailbox you know in the, at their house i mean think about it i mean in this in this world today everybody thinks oh everything's on the line but really For this business, it's not online. It's really going to their house. And anytime you can be on somebody's coffee table, this is this is the great lesson for everybody. I've got a I've got a coffee table over here. It's 20 years old. It's 20 years old. It barely stands. I've made $10 million dollars or maybe eleven million from writing books on that coffee table over here. That's pretty cool, right? And it's like it's here and and Recently, I was said I was asked, "Why don't you just throw it away?" I'm like, "Are you kidding me? That thing's worth ten million dollars. It's really not, but to me, it is, right?" So anyway, so 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 the idea of getting into people's house to their home is incredibly valuable. You know, there's a lot that we can put in the package, right? Why can't we put a newsletter in there? Why can't we put? Um, I mean, that's not as good as the coupon, and it's not as good as reminding the person to go. If you you know, right now, go. Right now, before you use it, even go to Allegro and, and get, please give a five star review. We'd really appreciate it. We love, we enjoy your business. And then on back, there's the coupon of some kind. Some kind, we, we used to, we call it bounce back coupons here. Bounce back, like a ball that you throw off the wall and you catch it. Um, it's a bounce back. 
And that's a bounce back coupon. And historically, bounce back coupons, when they're done correctly, they work quite well. Um, so that would be that would be my number one thought. The second thing would be like a newsletter, um, you know, uh, that would be re- relevant to the product, whatever it is. You know, taking notes or car- garbage that would be an interesting one. I'd have to think about. <laughs> but, but most most products certainly we can put information in people's hands on how they can use this more often at their house to save money. So if they use this, this more often, then they won't need to spend as much over here on something else from someone else. So that's not a terrible idea, actually. I would have to think about it a little more, but getting into a person's house for free, you're getting in for free. It costs you nothing to get into their house. That's a goal. That no one's going to take advantage of this. Nobody's going to sit, oh, I don't want to do that. It's probably not going to work. Oh, thank God people think like that. Because then when you and I do it, it'll work fine, right? So this is how we want to always be thinking. We're getting into their house. You know, it's not a digital download, right? It's not a digital download. It's not streaming video. This is literally going in their front door. They're literally going to see your ad or your promo or your or your um, your gift or or the request for action, and that's the only thing they're going to see today for a request for action in their house. It's the only thing. Nothing else they will see. It'll all be on a phone where where while they're driving. You know, when you can't do anything, right? So those are a few thoughts. Something will work. A bounce back coupon will work. How much? We don't know until we test different looks and sizes. You know, does it get this big? Does it get this big? I would put it on a business card. I've seen a lot of companies, um, because we get Amazon every day here, um, eight eight products a day. I bet you two of the eight have bounce back coupons on them. And and that's just for the reviewer, for me, the, the first person to review the product. So it's something to think about. Okay, Thank, really good, really good advice. Uh, but I have uh, um, another thoughts. Uh, we talk uh, with Carolina uh, about writing a book about uh, neuromarketing techniques on Allegro, and it's really uh, for me now interesting to borrow the table from you because it seems it's really worth for the uh, writers. Well, you'd have to come over here and sit down at the table because <laughs> it's not leaving the house. Um, yeah, yeah, really, that was sort of like the, uh, when I sit down at the table, I mean, I know I have to have my, my laptop. If you could see the laptop, I can't even see half of the keys, what the keys are on here, because this alone, this this $2,000 predator has probably earned $3 million. I mean, you know, just... Because I open it, I see it, it's up red and black, and I just start typing, and I'm over there. And then when I'm done for the day, I go upstairs and relax, watch television. I don't really, I mean, everything I do is generally about business in some way. But anyway, yes, I'll, I'll send you a photo of the of this ugly, horrible thing. And uh, Okay, uh, so at this moment, I probably uh, ask you about all the questions I, I want to ask. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, for me, the, the answers were re- really good, and um, uh, some techniques or some idea are really, go- really good. And I have in my mind uh, just uh, how to use it on the, with my customers and with our family company. It's, it's uh, really great. Thank you. I think you'll do great, Carolina. You thinking about going into the garbage bag business? Maybe, maybe I can start. I don't know. Probably I still stay with neuromarketing and maybe write a book. Okay, so thank you very much, Kevin. You guys have a great day over there. Thanks. So thank you very much, Kevin, and see you soon, I hope. That's all for today. Thank you for your time, and we hope our podcast was very interesting and helpful for you. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe to our podcast and be sure to join our Facebook group. Listen to you in the next episode.